Hi guys, uh, this is another video on chart work for mariners. So if you have been watching my previous videos on chart work, that's fantastic. But if you have not, then I'll give you a link to those previous videos in the description section below. I advise you guys watching those videos before you watch this video, because this video will assume that you have a basic knowledge of chart work. All right, having said that, today's video will focus on determining the course to steer to counteract for the effects of the current and wind. So my previous videos, I have taught you how to allow the leeway or the wind and the current to affect the ship's course. But today I'll teach you how to counteract for the effect of current and leeway. All right. So let's start with it. So on the bot on the top of the, of the screen is what I have already taught you. So I have taught you to uh, allow for the wind and the current to affect the ship's course. So if you see the top half of the screen, you see a vector triangle drawn there. So you can see uh, the line with the single arrow is the intended course to steer. But then you allow for the current in this case. And by allowing the current, you are basically drawing the current and the end of the course to steer. You draw the current. Let's say in this case, the current was sitting or the direction of the current is 2, 3, 2 degrees true. And the rate of the current is 1 knot. That means the drift of the current in one hour will be about one nautical mile. So you drew the current at the end of the course to steer and then the end of the current and the course to steer's beginning is joined to form the course made good. So the course made good is determined by double arrows. So the double arrows denotes the course made good. So that is the vessel's course made good because we let the current affect our course and speed. But today what I will be focusing on is determining the course to steer by counteracting for the effect of current. And then I'll show you how to counteract for the effect of the wind as well. So let's assume that the green dot at the bottom of the screen is our intended position. This is where we want to reach now from our last known position. So the course that we want to make good now is 200 degrees true. But we have to make sure that we counteract for the effect of current so that our vessel is not uh, made to do another course all right so we'll otherwise we'll reach somewhere else instead of the intended position so let's counteract for the effect of current at the very beginning of the course so when you allow the current you allow it at the end of the course to steer to determine your course made good but when you're counteracting you always counteract at the very beginning of your course so here you go so you again draw the current in the direction that it is going to that is two three two degrees so the three arrows denote the direction of the current the two arrows denote course made good and the single arrow denotes course to steer. All right. So you draw the current at the very beginning of your course. In this case, draw it in the direction that it is going. Because it is a one hour vector diagram, your rate of the current is one knot. So your drift will be one nautical mile. So mark one nautical mile on your current's vector. All right. This is how I have marked one nautical mile. All right. And then from that mark, measure the ship's speed in the next one hour using a compass. And then by measuring it of the compass, see where it intersects the course made good line and then join the two lines together. This line with a single arrow, the red line, the single arrow will give you your course to steer or the CTS. So in this case, the course to steer is 194 degrees true. So although I wanted to make good a course of 200 degrees true to reach my intended position, I have to counteract for the effect of current and then steer a new course of 194 degrees true to ensure that I will reach my intended position. Now what happens that when we allow uh, and you have must have seen in my previous videos when we allow the wind or the leeway and the current to affect our course we always allow for the leeway first and then the current. So allow so that L in the allow and the leeway let synchronize it together and then if we are counteracting we counteract for current first and then the leeway. So C and C again. All right. So uh, counteracting current allowing leeway. So when you allow, you always allow for the wind and then the current. When you're counteracting, always counteract current first and then the effect of the wind. All right. I'll show you in the next slide how to do that. So I take the same triangle and I put it here. And you can see this is where we counteracted for current. So we counteracted for the current at the very beginning of the course and we determined our new course to steer. That was 194 degrees. Now let's assume here the wind is acting from an easterly direction 
and it is pushing your vessel towards or the vessel's course towards a westerly direction. So instead of course to steer 194, now your vessel is being pushed say by about 12 degrees to steer 206 degrees. So when uh, when your vessel is being pushed by say about 12 degrees and 12 degrees nothing but the effect of the wind. It's an example. It's a leeway example. So if it is pushing you away from your intended course, you will now go into the wind. So you will steer into the wind in this case by the same amount that it is pushing you away from. So if it is pushing you away by 12 degrees, you steer into the wind by 12 degrees and then your new course to steer becomes 194 minus 12 degrees. In this case, you push yourself back into the easterly direction, which will give you a new course to steer that is 182 degrees too. So if you steer 182 degrees too, you not only counteract for the effect of the prevailing current, but you also counteract for the effect of the leeway. So always counteract current first and then leeway. All right. So let me summarize it for you in the next slide that what happens when you allow for leeway current and what happens when you counteract for current and leeway. So note how I try to say allowing with leeway and current and when I say contract, I always mention current first and then leeway. So on your left hand side of the screen, uh, this is where you're allowing. So what you do is basically you uh, draw the vessel starting position, plot the vessel's course and speed and this assumes that there is no effect of wind and current. And so you estimate it by the uh, course and the speed that the vessel will perform let's say in the next one hour. That gives you your DR position or your dead reckoning position. Dead reckoning position is assumed uh, completely only on the ship's course and speed. It does not take into account the wind and leeway. But EP or estimated position is slightly more accurate because it takes into account the effect of the leeway and the current. So what happens is from the dead reckoning position or from the starting position itself, when you allow, you allow for the starting position itself, the, the wind, the wind you allow from the starting position, all right? But the current you allow at the end of the uh, steering position, so from the DR or from the EP1. So you allow for the leeway at the very starting position and then you obtain EP1. I'll show you in the next slide what I mean. If it's not very clear to you, I'll show you to you by drawing. And then from EP1, you apply the set and drift to get your EP2. This EP2 also takes into account the direction and the drift of the current. All right, but when you are counteracting, so your left hand side of the screen is allowing for the leeway and then the current. But when you are counteracting, and that is your right side of the screen, you will from the starting position, you will plot the intended track to the destination. That will be your course made good or intended course made good. And then you counteract for the current first by drawing the current and in finding out the course to steer to counteract the current. And then you determine your leeway or how your wind is pushing the vessel. And then you steer into the wind to contract for the effect of the leeway as well. All right, so let me show you what I meant by showing you both the things in the same slide. So if you see the next slide now, you will see that uh, let's start first by allowing for the wind uh, and the current. All right, so let's see, assume that at 1500, that was our known position. And from 1500, the vessel is going to be steering 12 knots per hour for one and a half hours and uh, on a course of 230 degrees too. All right, so we'll make all the vector for one and a half hours because here the uh, our example is say that we are steering for one and a half hours. So from 1500, one and a half hours is 1630. I'll be steering a course of 230 degrees too. So assuming there is no wind and leeway, uh, I will say that in one and a half hours based on 12 nautical miles per hour, my vessel will do a distance of 18 knots and that will give me 18 nautical miles so that will give me my DR position. So my DR position assumes there is no wind and leeway, but there is wind and leeway. So if in this case, my leeway or uh, the wind is not westerly, that is coming from top of the screen and is pushing my vessel to the east by about 10 degrees, as mentioned in the question, I will allow for leeway first. So that means I will get my EP1 first. So I allow for the leeway, letting it affect my ship's course. And now my intended course has been pushed by 10 degrees to the east. So this becomes my uh, new course and that and again I measure of 18 miles on this new course and that gives me my EP1. Then I allow for current. So I draw the current in this case I think the current is 1 to 0 degrees that's right and the rate is 1.4 knots but over in one and a half hours it will be 2.1 nautical miles of drift. All right, please make sure you're familiar with these terms by watching my previous videos otherwise it will be difficult for you to understand. So in one and a half hours the current has drifted the vessel by about 2.1 nautical miles based on a rate of 1.4 knots. 
So I draw the current. The three arrows denote the direction of the current. That is the current towards which the current is going to. That is 120 degrees true. And now I can get my EP2 by joining the end of the current line to the 1500 hours position. And that will give me my course made good and speed made good. So this line now is my course made good denoted by double arrows and the speed made good as well. If I measure of the distance and divide it by one and a half hours, it will give me the speed made good in the last one hour or so. All right. And uh, so this total distance is the distance made good by the vessel in one and a half hours. All right. If you measure it off and you divide it by one and a half hours, you will get the speed made good in the last one hour or so. Now let's say from the last known position that is EP2, I want to pass off the green island by which is bearing a by distance of two miles off. All right, bearing 300 degrees true. So I should be bearing 300 degrees true, 300 degrees true when I am passing off by two nautical miles of the green island. So by this becomes my new course to be made good, denoted by double arrows. But this time I know there is current and there is leeway. I want to counteract for this current and leeway. So when I let it, when I allowed for the leeway and the current, I allowed the leeway first and then I allowed the current. But when I will counteract, I will counteract for the current first and then I will counteract for the leeway. So I will counteract for the current by drawing the current again at EP2. I'll draw it in the same direction of 120 degrees and making a one and a half hour vector triangle. So it will again be for 2.1 nautical miles. At the end of 2.1 nautical miles, I will measure the ship's speed in the next one and a half hours and I'll measure off 18 nautical miles and cut it on the course made good line. If I join these two points together, that gives me my new course to steer by counteracting for the effect of current. All right, that will be denoted by a single arrow. But if I now want to counteract for the effect of wind as well, I will push myself into the wind. So I will go into the northwest, into the westerly direction by 10 degrees and that will counteract for the effect of wind as well, as I showed you previously. All right, so if it, the wind is coming from northwesterly, I will go into northwest by the same amount of 10 degrees and that will give me my final course to steer to ensure that I pass two nautical miles of Green Island by bearing 300 degrees true and also by counteracting the current and the leeway. So I hope this was clear to you guys that when you allow, you allow for leeway first and then current. And when you are counteracting, counteract for current first and then leeway by the same amount that it is being pushed away. The wind's direction only matters if the speed doesn't matter. Alright, so let me know what you thought about this video, if it was useful for your learning. I look forward to your feedback. I get a lot of comments and feedback and appreciation from all of you. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. And I'll see you soon with my next video, guys. All the best with your studies. See you soon. Bye.